So Christmas is coming and it's time to start painting up some of these little mice and I thought I'd just offer you a quick little tutorial so that you can uh, pick up on some hints on how to do these guys. If you didn't like the whole great big tree and the 12 mice is just way too many, you might be interested in what I'm going to be doing. I did two mice on four different placemats. There we go. And then, and finally, those little guys. And I am going to demonstrate on this piece, which is a mailbox insert. Extremely versatile pattern. So we'll start off with the one quarter. So take your one eighth out because it's nice and soaked up. And we're going to also start with charcoal gray. Now charcoal gray is not one of the colors that you have to put the easy float in. So just hold on to that. You're going to make a puddle by pulling a fair bit of water and mixing it into a little bit of your charcoal gray. <clears throat> you will blot the brush up close to the ferrule and you will put out a few little drops of water on your palette so that you can pick them up and adjust the consistency of the paint because that's the most important thing. If you don't get the consistency correct you will not be able to get your brush to work. Now the charcoal gray is almost going to be a practice step. It's not really going to show that much and you're not going to stress too much about it. You're just going to make little tiny strokes. Don't forget to pull them down into the little legs. Press with your finger if you get it out of control. Think about how the fur would go, would lay on this little guy. Little tiny strokes and start on the bellies or the bigger parts of the animal until you kind of get the idea of it or the feel of it. So same thing here, maybe turn it upside down and make sure you put some little hairs right down into the nose. We do not want a clown nose by the end of this. And if you avoid that pink, you will end up with a clown nose. So make sure you put nice little hairs all the way in. And like I said, this is almost like a practice step. So just think about how the hairs are going to go. Because there are some tricky areas, like his little armpits and things like that. I'm not really going to get too much of a hair, a hair um, look. Okay, so you're just, I guess with this step, we're trying to build up a little bit of a foundation so that we can get the next couple of colors going. And hopefully he'll look good. Okay, so bring it, again, bring him down into his little ankle. Think about how the hair will be laying and falling. And don't forget the, don't forget the uh, tails. So I'm right up on the chisel edge and I'm just tap, tap, tapping. There's another one here. I'm going to get an eraser and I'm going to erase all those extra lines there so that they're not going to be too distracting for me. And then you'll know also what exactly you will need to, to cover. There you go. Right down into his wrist. 
keep the strokes very short on his little face. I think there's going to be a little piece in there of him as well. Okay. I'm going to get an eraser and erase those graphite lines. Next color is driftwood. And this one will definitely show. So you want to get your easy float, which you have cut one to one with water. You're going to put a couple of drops into your driftwood. And you're either going to mix with a palette knife or the back of your brush. Mix it right in. And this is going to just help you get the consistency correct. We still have to add water, but this will give you a head start. So now we're going to add water. And make that puddle. It's the same as what we did over here. You have to think about what you're doing here. Make the puddles so that you're going to end up with your nice transparent lines. Charcoal gray was the practice and now it counts. So we will blot up close to the ferrule. Pretty much take all that moisture out. You can put a few of your drops of water on your palette again so that you can easily adjust if this is not correct. Okay, so you load it side to side, rock it, and pull it out. And we will see what we've got. Again, we're going to start in the middle here where his little belly is. Start your strokes in the air and finish them in the air. Layer them. There we go. Again, just think about how the little hairs would lay on his little body. Make sure you come right down and into his feet and his hands. As you get to the edge of a shape, shorten up your strokes even more. Very short little tiny strokes that you can layer together. If your strokes oops, if your strokes are transparent, you can put lots and lots and lots of them on and he will still look hairy and cute. See, I can go back in here too because this is going to be the belly area. And of course he's fat. This little armpit, bring that all up into there like that. And sometimes you're on the chisel edge to kind of get into some of those little smaller parts. Make sure that you put a few little hairs on his tail. And I'm right up on the chisel for that as well. Start the stroke in the air and finish it in the air. Now for the little face, you may decide you have to change to your 1 8 That's fine. Right down into the nose. Here's the face. Keep keep this very, very small. Don't let him start growing. Notice how I'm coming back toward the nose. If you go that way, 
you'll end up with a Santa beard. Well, you might not, but chances are very good that you will. Okay, but drop down to your one eighth if that's what you'd like to do as well. Maybe you can do all the bodies first and then the faces. Or you can do one little guy at a time, whichever you decide. If you've got the consistency of the paint correct, your brush, even though it's a quarter inch and a small one, your brush should go for a fair length of time before you have to reload. Just tap, 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 tap. And you've got the little cheek in. Then you can do this part. One more little guy for me. Get that loaded up properly. Truly, you can put these little guys on a lot of things. Night lights, trays, cookies for Santa, plates, tons of stuff. Okay. Flip them around again. Right up on the chisel. Don't be afraid to manipulate that brush around and around and around. short. The strokes need to be on the face. And there's another little lump. So this is the step that's going to take you the longest, as you can see. Okay, we got a good start there though. Now the next step is a wash of raw sienna. So take your oval mop And just gently wash him all over with the raw sienna. Just tap it on and turn him a little bit brown yellowish brown. I don't know if you can get any on the on the tails. If you can that's good. There we go. We'll just let that dry and then we'll continue on. Now those three colors are pretty much all you're going to repeat until you like your little guy. So I would go back at this stage and repeat a little bit of driftwood, concentrating this time a little bit more on where the light parts are going to be. So we have definitely got the whole belly thing. That's the guy we're doing. So we're going to just put a little bit more of the driftwood on. Now 
don't have to worry too much about those armpits because they are um, going to be behind a tree bough. So. And I definitely will turn to my smaller brush for his little face. Make sure it's well under control. Tap it. And spin it around and you can get his jawline in. Then I'm going to do a little bit of light buttermilk. Now light buttermilk is a color that you need to put that um, color float into as well. So I put a couple drops in there, mixing it all up. Blot. And you can put a couple of drops on your palette so that you can adjust as you need it. And then you'll whiten up his belly. Oops. If that happens, just press it with your finger before it dries. Now to get a nice fuzzy belly, you have to always be changing the direction of your stroke a little bit. You don't want it to look super hairy. You want to give the illusion of hair. And these guys do not have long hair either. So, you know, you don't want to make it to be a great big hairy thing. He's more like a velour. Okay, so that's a uh, good part of the belly. Oops. Okay, you want to make sure at this stage that you've got the right size brush. And if you really don't like your 1 8, you can also use a liner, but a liner does give you a different look. So try to persevere with the 1 8. And I'll even go to warm white. As we get going. So then I'll go back to my charcoal gray. And then we'll darken up the spots. Right up there. Maybe you need to give him a little trim. Maybe he is looking like a Santa, so just kind of come in there and tab along. I have to have a bit of a shadow. Just go back and forth between the driftwood and the charcoal gray. And whenever I need to, I might put a little bit of that raw sienna in. Whenever he's looking a little bit too boring. Make sure you get some little hairs poking out of the body here.
So things to look for are making sure that the pink now sort of joins naturally with the hairy part of his body. It doesn't look like he has socks. And you don't have that clown nose. We don't want a clown nose. We don't want, we don't want it to look like he had a pink nose and just stuck it on. And then I'll go back to my light buttermilk and perk up the light buttermilk. Now if you got carried away with the driftwood, then you'll probably have to go back and put the charcoal gray on. Now you can repeat the steps as many times as you want, of course. I think you have to repeat things at least twice. Definitely got a white belly there, so it's going to be different. different color. And then I'll finish up the eyes. You have to finish the eyes before it's going to look really kind of cute. It's going to just look bad. There you go. Make a nice round eye and put that little pointy part in. And I'm using my 10-0. Now probably I always find that when you put that little white line in, it's not going too badly today. If it's too heavy, don't fret. Just wait for it to dry and then go back in with the black. There's a little sparkles. See, if that's like that, but don't erase it completely. Just, just take off what you don't want. If he's looking mad, just means you've straightened out the top of that eye there, and you need to make it a little bit rounder. And what you could do too is either with your one eighth or maybe with this little liner is just put in a few hairs above there more like a a highlight i think definitely need some warm white now and you can put on the face you could use the uh, liner because you're just trying to perk it up a little bit mostly just in this little area here but I would definitely use a rake on the belly part and you will want to put that uh, e color float the easy float in your in your white Try to just put it sort of in the middle area there. You don't want it to look like a, a bullseye. Just want to brighten it up. Okay. 
Okay. Plus you'll notice that if I go back and I fix up his little uh, hat here, I've just taken my lunar blender and making a fuzzy edge, but you could stipple it if you like the stippled look for a hat, but you can see that if you finish that off as well, or at least put it back in a little bit, it'll start to look cuter and cuter with all the little details. So at this particular stage, I think for me, I would repeat all my steps. I'd go back with the with the charcoal gray and I would definitely darken in here and I'd darken up in here too and then I'd just maybe take the smallest amount of driftwood and just put a few little hairs here and there. And you see right there, I don't like that transition yet either so again I would um, I would rake the driftwood because the driftwood of all the colors um, is the one that covers the best. So you kind of almost have to put it in and then maybe put a little bit of brown or maybe the raw sienna too if you like to have a little bit of a golden golden guy. See, just fix that right up there. And if I find that I want it a little bit darker, I would put more charcoal gray on. If I want it golden, I'd put raw sienna on. And to finish off everything else is um, just dry brushing. Dry brush the hat. I'll just give a close up here of some of the other things that you can do, or well, that you'll have to be doing. Um, the dry brushing on the hat we mentioned. Uh, you'll also be dry brushing on the candies. Um, your floats, midnight blue for any of the dark. You could finish off your hat up here with your rake brush if you like to have that kind of an extra fuzzy look. Obviously the pine boughs with your greens and then the festive green is that goldy metallic -y color that you've got. And on the one on the hat actually here I put um, some glamour dust on there on my final coat of varnish which is kind of nice. Whiskers can go on after one coat of varnish. It's always nice to have that little bit of a um, safety step. I hope you'll find lots of things that these little guys can go on. One or twelve doesn't really matter however many you uh, you would like to paint if you have any questions don't forget to email me and I uh, just like to take this opportunity to wish everybody a very Merry Christmas thank you take care